Hello everyone, this is Chef Keizad and today we are going to make sous vide chicken biscuits. So let's start our dish and let's start making our first element which is mushroom mixture. Let's first go through the ingredients. Make sure that your pan is hot and then you add your oil always remember when you sauteing anything you always should use virgin olive oil you should refrain from using extra virgin olive oil because extra virgin is usually used for making salads it should not be cooked so we always remember don't Saute your garlic too much, it has to be transparent and it should not turn brown because this is continental food. Usually we caramelize our ingredients when we make Indian cuisine. So just saute it for a few seconds. Now I'll be adding thyme. Always remember thyme should go in oil and it should not go last because it will not impart flavors and now we have added our mushrooms whenever you saute mushrooms your flame should be very high otherwise it will lose out water and we want our mixture to be really dry always remember whenever you are sauteing your garlic or onion or any ingredient you can also add a dash of salt into it so that what happens is that due to osmotic pressure, the salt will absorb water from the ingredients and it won't stick to your pan. So if you see, there is no water because the flame is really high. If your flame is not high, it will ooze out water. And always remember if you are using dry mushrooms, the process is completely different. You need to soak them in warm water for 10 to 15 minutes. If you're using porcini mushroom, you have to soak them and then you can use it. You cannot use it directly. You soak it, then you drain out the water, wash it and then you chop it and use it. And if you're fond of wine, you can also add wine in your food. However, again, when you're using wine, you can use white wine. And again, your flame has to be very high because wine evaporates at around 78 to 80 degrees Celsius. So if your flame is low, wine won't evaporate and your food will become very sour. So now our mushroom mixture is ready. Now you add your seasoning. You can add your salt. And always remember, whenever you add your black pepper, your flame again should be turned off. Because if you cook your black pepper powder, your food will again turn bitter. So my flame is off and I've added my black pepper. If you want, you can also add parsley. Now we will be making sous chicken biscuit. It doesn't mean we will be using biscuit as such. We have to shape our chicken like a biscuit. So I've taken a strip of chicken from breast and now I'll just cut it. And we have to pound our chicken with a meat tenderizer. So the reason why we pound our meat is that you get an even texture everywhere and you get an even cooking also. Now this is being pounded very well. What you need to do is that you just have to season it with salt, little bit of salt, little bit of black pepper. You can also put herbs or anything of your own choice. Now we will be stuffing our chicken with the mushroom which we had made earlier. We just have to fold this chicken. And now 
what you can do is that you can add mix herbs on top so once it's being sous vide it gets a very nice effect on top now what you do is that you take your butter paper and you flip this chicken in butter paper fold it always remember you don't need to use butter paper when you're making sous vide over here the product is a little bit delicate so to retain the shape we have wrapped it in butter paper or you can use parchment paper otherwise you just uh, take breast you put it in the bag you put wine or herbs of your choice always remember if you put your ingredient in ziploc bag try and remove air out of this or else the best way is to vacuum this if you have a vacuum machine if you don't have this is also completely fine just make sure that the air is completely removed Okay, whenever you want to sous vide your chicken, your ideal temperature will be between 60 to 70. If you want to sous vide your fish, it will be 50 to 60. So now if you see, uh, I have used a thermometer, so you need to check your temperature. If you see it's 63, now we can put our chicken inside. And always remember that if you don't have a thermometer, what you can do is that once your water starts simmering, you just turn off the flame for 2 to 3 minutes and then it will reach 60 to 70 then put your chicken into it and turn on the flame again you usually you can actually buy a sous vide machine however it's little expensive so you can use thermometer the only difference is that the temperature will be little bit volatile in this method if you use a machine your temperature will be very much constant so now if you see the temperature is 63 i'm putting my chicken inside and this needs to be cooked for around four to five minutes Always remember if your uh, bag is not vacuumed properly, what will happen is that your ingredient will float on top. So try and put some sort of weight on it like a spoon or a ladle on top. So that's the reason we vacuum our ingredients so that it doesn't float on top. After 4 to 5 minutes, we will remove our sous vide. Always remember if you are cooking chicken breast, if it's, if it's thin then it might take 15 to 20 minutes, if it's thick then it might take even 30 minutes to 35 minutes. So it all de depends upon the size of your ingredient and always remember the art of sous vide is being learned by practice. You cannot follow a particular recipe as such. So it's been now 5 minutes and our chicken is almost ready so we are removing out and once you unpack your chicken, your product will look something like this. For making mashed potatoes, always remember there are two ways of making your mashed potatoes. What you do is that you can either roast your potatoes in the oven or else you can boil your potatoes. Always remember all root vegetables like carrots or potato, you should not put them in boiling water. You should start with tap water first. So if you want to boil carrots or potatoes, always start with room temperature water. And the key technique of making mashed potato is that your potato, when it's mashed, when it's hot, at that time you have to add your butter and cream because if your potatoes are not hot then what will happen is that your ingredients won't emulsify properly. So our intention to, is to have a good texture so you need to add your butter and cream to your mashed potato when it's very hot. So that's what we are going to do and then you can season it with salt pepper and if you want you can also add nutmeg into it. Always remember nutmeg is one of the ingredients which never needs to be cooked otherwise it becomes bitter. Same just like black pepper. So this is my potato which is piping hot. I'm adding my butter into it. And cream. So if you see, my potatoes are hot and I've added my butter and cream. It's been getting emulsified very well. So if your potatoes are not hot, it will not emulsify. You won't get a good texture. So our mashed potato has got enough salt, we are not adding salt to it because butter is also salty and while boiling also we added salt. So I just have added black pepper and you can also put nutmeg. So 
So this is how you, you, you can make your mashed potato. We have also made uh, saffron scented mashed potatoes. So the process is absolutely the same. What you have to do is that you have to take your saffron and if it's new saffron, then you need not broil it. You just add warm water into your saffron. If your saffron is old, so what happens is that if your saffron is two or three years old, then it will absorb moisture from the air. So you have to broil it first on pan for few seconds and then you have to add your warm water. So we have added a uh, plain and saffron scented mashed potato in the same piping bag and you will get to see the effect later on when we do the plating. For gramolata, uh, the ingredients are very simple, however the sauce is very versatile. It's been used for steaks, it's been used in stews and now we are going to use gramolata in a uh, suet chicken dish also. The main ingredients for gramolata is your parsley, chop your parsley, then you add your lemon zest. Always remember whenever you add lemon zest in, into your ingredient, use a, a microplane or a zester and never use the white part of your lemon so I'm adding my zest, lemon zest into it chop garlic goes into it don't cook your garlic for seasoning you can add your black pepper and salt now gramolata is not going to be cooked so you can actually use extra virgin olive oil I am using virgin olive oil, however if you want you can use extra virgin. Just give it a stir and your sauce is ready. However you can also add chopped capers into it or else if you want it to be a little bit spicy you can add chilies. We have made all the elements so let's do the plate.